Hi, this is Bruno from RVing TV, and today we're going to do a review on a 2017 Chevrolet Volt. The Volt is an all-electric vehicle, which has been a little misunderstood. Um, we did do a video on the Gen 1 Volt. 2017 is a second generation Volt with some little changes. It is an all electric, it is not a hybrid. So the wheels are driven completely by electric motors, not by an engine. However, the Volt does have a backup generator or range extender that allows you to go beyond the electric range without having to stop. So it'll self generate power. What we're going to do is look at this 2017 from a used car perspective because it is a great deal and can really work to save you some money, especially if you're driving in city or close to metropolitan areas. It is a front wheel drive car and let's take a look at some of the features from the exterior of the Volt. We're going to come around to the front here and what you'll notice is a very aerodynamic shape because aerodynamics are very important for electric vehicles to be super efficient. So very sculpted grille, very low lying hood. We have LED lights up front for, day, for regular driving lights and then your daytime lights here are going to be LED markers as well. Uh, we do have active close, air closing for the front because we don't need a full radiator. We do need some for our range extender but because a lot of times you're running on electricity, you don't have to cool an engine. So again, airflow is important. We have some active dampeners up front that will actually close and redirect more airflow out and around the car. Very nice profile overall for the Volt, and they've made it look very much in the second generation, very much more like a mainstream car. Now let's take a look inside at some of the features, and we'll start off from the back seats. Now, what makes the Volt different than a lot of vehicles out there, electric vehicles, a lot of electric vehicles are setting their batteries low right down in the base pan of the car. The Volt was developed that your battery cell is here in the center and then comes out in a T fashion right underneath these rear seats. Now, in the Gen 2 car, Chevrolet changed this vehicle to be a five passenger seater. Now it seats four really comfortably, but you can get a fifth person in. They did this because in some states and provinces, if you have a five seater with this battery capacity, you get a little more uh, rebates when you purchase the car brand new. Now in some states and provinces, there are some rebates if you're buying this car as a used vehicle. So something to look out for based on where you live. In Ontario, there is a $1,000 rebate on used cars through a private uh, consortium that works with the actual uh, electric driving center and education center here in the province. So in the rear seats, this is a, a leather optioned in Volt. It's an LT rather than a Premier. My opinion is you get more value in the LT from a cost perspective. You have your two seats, three seat belts, armrest in the back, and it's a 60-40 split for the seats so you can throw them down for additional uh, seating area itself. Let's take a little look at our luggage area and then we'll hop in the front and look at some of the great features. Now the Volt is a hatchback and the advantage of the hatchback is that when it opens you really get a lot of storage area. Nice large area, you can see even our extra large camera bag here really takes up almost no space whatsoever. And then you have a couple of hidden compartments. We have a compartment here that you can use for storage and actually right in here is our traditional 110 volt charger. You can plug this in to any household plug. Now, talking about the plug itself, the Volt can be charged two ways when it's parked overnight. You can charge it on 110, plugging it into a household plug. That will take approximately 10 and a half hours to charge this vehicle. And there's two settings you can use, an 8 amp and a 12 amp, depending on how old your electrical system in your house or work happens to be. 
The ideal way is a level two charger that'll charge this car in four and a half hours. Now the Gen 2 car will actually give you charge uh, or range, I should say. It, GM says an average of 80. So in the winter, you're gonna be 50, 60 kilometers in the extreme cold like we have here in Ontario. And in the summer, you're gonna get about 80 to 100 kilometers of range, depending on your driving styles. We also have underneath our storage area here is going to be a little additional storage uh, down in here. We don't actually have a spare on the Volt to keep the weight down. We actually have some uh, gel that gets thrown into your tires, pumped into your tires and a pump that'll fill up any small holes or should you pick up a nail to be able to get you to a service center and then our batteries out back here as well and some extra storage space itself. To keep weight down, you do get a privacy cover. It's a cloth cover. And that just keeps your gear nice and, and uh, secure back here and private. The 60-40 split seats are a great feature as well because if you need that extra storage space you can drop the seats down and really fill this up. So some really great storage overall. Let's hop into the front of the car and let's take a look at some of the great features this Volt has to offer. Now the Volt has a comfort access to get into the car itself, so it's a keyless access. You have, you, you, as long as your fob is on you in your purse, you can actually approach the car, push the little button on the handle, and the car will unlock. And there's several modes that you can use. The car also has a pre-start or a engine conditioning, uh, or sorry, not engine conditioning, I should say battery conditioning. So as most cars that are gasoline powered, you would start your engine and warm up the car. You can actually precondition the batteries while it's plugged in to bring the batteries up to proper temperature. Now in extreme weather, the range extender will run at times to help keep the batteries at proper temperature so that you're not using up battery power to, to maintain those batteries and you're using the battery power for your range. The range extender is very, very fuel efficient. In the Gen 2 Volt, it runs on regular gas, where the Gen 1s were set to run on premium. So a little bit of savings from a cost perspective. What's nice with this Volt is you do have push button start, and it's a very quiet car. So when it starts, you're gonna hear that chime. You can set it to hear a little startup tone so that you know that the car is running and the same when we shut it down. Now, what I like about the Volt, we'll, we'll turn our attention here to our main screens. You have your main driving screen, which is all digital. That's going to show you how much battery power, and right now you can see we have full battery power. We are shooting this on a cooler winter day, very sunny. And our range for this colder weather has been about 67 kilometers. We, di we have had the opportunity to drive this vehicle on a regular basis in warm weather. And we've been able to push that 80 kilometer average up to about 100 to 110 kilometers. So you can see quite a bit of a variance based on, how it dr on, based on what the temperature is around and how you drive itself. Your center stack can actually be changed, that you have different functions in here, so you can set, if you wanted your phone, you could put navigation in here, um, have general information. I like to drive it with the kilometers per hour with our speed running large, but you can have your total range showing up, you can take a look at your engine oil life, tire pressures, your average speed, there's even a timer to show how long you've been driving. You can look at your coolant temperature and then you have your different trips. Now you can see for example here trip A, this car has clocked in 8,504 kilometers and that has been between both electric and the range extender running and it's averaged 2.3 kilometers. In trip B, we've 
run 3,800 kilometers here, running about 2.5 liters per 100 kilometers. So even when that range extender is running over long trips, very, very fuel efficient. Now in our center stack, what they've changed from the Gen 1 Volt is more push buttons, traditional cars, where the general one, uh, the Gen 1 volts were a very tactile. It was simply running your finger over a button, to, but no physical button movement, where here we have the physical buttons. Again, we have multiple information sources we can use, whether it be radio, phone. Uh, here's our energy, so we have our information. You know, it will tell us here lifetime we've been running at 1.8 liters per 100 kilometers. And since this last run, it had run 2.9 kilometers on battery, 22.2 kilometers on fuel, and it had used 1.75 liters. As we tap over, It'll give you an idea of where your driving techniques were, whether they were efficient or not, and where the power was being used overall. We can also tap and take a look if we want to see how much have we actually to compare this to a gas vehicle. We can see that the lifetime consumption is 3.7 LE, so, so L uh, liters E, by 100 kilometers, so that is actually factoring in fuel as well as electric cost. And that is showing up about 3.7 liters E per 100 kilometers. Still very, very efficient. Our charging, we can set different modes, and if you're plugging into a regular household plug, you can use 8 amps if it's an older electrical system, or you can switch it to 12 amps, which will charge a little bit quicker. You can also set your charge modes, whether you want it to charge right away or at a delayed time based on when you're leaving. And then we'll take a little drive to show you, uh, but this is our flow meter. It's just kind of a fun thing, and it'll show whether you're taking battery power or pulling from the generator itself. Of course, we have our radio here, and you have all your standard setups. Our phone. If you're subscribed, you can actually have OnStar navigation. And when we go back to our home button, what we also have in this vehicle is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So we simply take our phone, plug it right in, and Android Auto pops up, and now you'll have, it'll just take a second to, to load, and then what you'll have is all your features, such as Google Maps, you can have Spotify, um, a selection of sources based on different apps that you have on your phone, so you can have Amazon Music, TuneIn, a various number of items that you can use, even weather updates can also be voice commanded as well as the Chevrolet system. When we look down, it's very easy to drive. You have your electronic brake, standard shifter, and you'll notice it says drive and low. So as you're driving, you can shift into low, which will allow you to regenerate. Or in the Gen 2s, what they've done is right behind our steering wheel, right up here on the left-hand side, we have a little paddle we can pull in. And what that paddle will do is actually regen, slow the car down, which is nice when you're in city traffic, uh, even on the highway as you're traveling and the car in front of you lets up a little bit rather than hitting the brakes. You can either use your shifter to go into low or hit the paddle and it'll slow it down. We have our mode button here and that mode button will do several things. Our normal mode is electric driving. If we tap it again on our main screen, it'll put us into a sports mode. So I'll show you right up here. It'll go into sports mode. Uh, the sports mode will just give you a quicker throttle response, whether you're in electric or gas. 
And then we have a mountain mode. If you're doing a lot of hill climbs, large mountains, what this will actually do is put a reserve on the electricity. You'll notice we've changed. It's only going to allow us to use so much electricity and it will kick in our range extender sooner to help recharge some of that battery and give us a little extra power. Then finally what we have which is a really interesting mode is called hold. What hold mode does is it puts your battery power as you can see has been all grayed out, puts it on reserve and will allow us to drive only on the range extender. This is nice as if you live somewhere further out like we do up in the Aurelia area. You're traveling to the city and you want to hold your electric power for driving in city. In Europe they've done this because some cities are starting to create zones that to get into the inner city you have to be running electric. You can't be running uh, gasoline engines. So this way you could run on fuel, very fuel efficient, get into the inner city where you're going to really get maximum range because of regeneration on the battery and save that battery power for then. So let's do something. Let's take a little drive. Um, that'll give you an experience of what this car sounds like. And uh, oh, I did actually forget to point out a couple of things. You do have heated seats in this Volt as well as automatic climate control and something different that you don't see in most cars, an eco and a max mode. The eco mode is exactly what you would think it is. It's an economical mode that really watches the heating of the interior area, slows the heating fan down a little bit to you be as, as uh, electrical efficient as possible. The max is for really cold or really hot extremes where you need to heat or cool the vehicle down much more. It's going to be a much more aggressive use of electricity. So when we want to get going you can actually just drive this vehicle like any normal car. Put it in drive and you don't really need to even be shifting down etc. The car will regenerate when it needs. We can turn off our electric parking brake or it can also be set to automatically release on its own. Let's go for a quick little drive around the block here and that way you can get a really good sense of how nice and quiet the electric car is to drive. So I'm, we're going to pull out here and then what I'm going to do is I will actually, sorry, So I'm going to just be very quiet for the next couple of minutes and allow you to hear the road noise and the general noise of the Chevrolet Volt. So you notice a very quiet running car. We can actually hear some of the gravel under the tires. As we come up to this turn, I just simply use that paddle to cut a little bit of speed off and it takes that energy and now puts it into the battery rather than using it as braking power and consuming it in, uh, or just putting it out there as heat through your brakes. We're gonna approach another little stop sign down here. And you'll notice as we regen, it's just bringing the car down to a nice stop to the point where you literally just put your brake, your foot on the brake to make that final stop. Now it's got good pep, you know, we give it a little push, you can get a lot of battery power out of that and really just pick up some good speed itself, very quiet for the driving makes it very efficient and then if we put it in the sports mode it it gets even quicker and more responsive now what's also nice about this volt is that it's a real pleasure to drive part of that is the overall part of that is the overall setup of the car itself the reason it's such a joy to drive, they have really good steering response. It's an electric steering, 
but the weight of the battery in here really keeps the car settled well, but also the profile of the car. For aerodynamics, they've set this really low to the ground. We have about as much ground clearance as a Corvette in this car. So you're nice and low, you have the battery really keeping that center of gravity low, and what it ends up doing is giving you a really fun car to drive with a very much a sports car feel behind it. The closest vehicle I've driven uh, previously to a sense of driving was actually a Z4 Roadster, which is pretty impressive when you can take a two, two seater Roadster built to be a really fun driving car and actually have an electric car that feels very similar, but you can put five people, all sorts of groceries in it, and drive it back and forth in all weather to drive. So if you're you know, in the market for a used vehicle, you're driving that 60, 80 kilometers uh, a day, the Volt is a great vehicle to look at in the used car market. And even though there aren't many incentives on a used car, they've been priced pretty attractively. And you'll find with your fuel savings, that'll only add overall to the attractiveness of the price. So if you're in that market for a used vehicle, take a look at a 2017, 2016, 2018 Chevrolet Cruze, uh, Cruze, sorry, Chevrolet Volt. Uh, I'm thinking Cruise because it's built on the same platform as the Cruise, which has helped them keep costs down. So take a look at a Chevrolet Volt. You'll be very pleasantly surprised of this electric vehicle. It was the number one selling vehicle in North America, so very popular. And crew and Volt lovers have absolutely loved to get out and just cruise around and enjoy their Volts without spending all the money on fuel. If you liked our video, please click the like button below. Right next to it is the little bell. Feel free to click the bell and you'll be notified of new videos that come available here at RVing TV. This is Bruno from RVing TV saying thank you for viewing our video and you stay safe and healthy.